This morning, we now know two people are dead in Owen County after the severe storms that devastated parts of Indiana Friday night. It brings a number of victims in Indiana to five. We're told they were camping at McCormick's Creek State Park. Indiana State Police shared these images of the park, which is not far from Bloomington. The Indiana Department of National Resources tells us Brett and Wendy Kincaid of Rossville died in this storm. Indiana Conservation Officers are now continuing to investigate the park's camping sites. We do have an update. The park is now closed until further notice. This morning, we now know at least seven tornadoes ripped through Indiana in that severe storm. One of those, an EF2, devastating parts of Johnson County, including Whiteland. Matthew Fultz was in Whiteland yesterday morning. He is returning. Uh, you just spoke to the fire chief there. How are the response efforts and the rescue uh, and relief efforts going there? Uh -huh. Yeah, Gina, I can tell you the relief efforts are still going. They're still making sure everyone is accounted for. However, the sun is up 48 hours later here in Whiteland and the damage is just still unreal. You take a look behind me, you can see a home completely ripped to shreds. And we're actually in a different neighborhood this morning, just off of Whiteland Road, where many still do not have power in this community this morning. Now, I want to show you some uh, drone video that we shot just drone video that we actually shot we're going to hopefully have it around 9 30 hour and it can it shows the complete path that this tornado took small town of whiteland the video is just incredible that shows just the damage that's left behind many people that i spoke with uh yesterday tell me that the tornado actually came through here in about five minutes. That's how quickly it came through and left this much damage. Meanwhile, this morning, the community and Johnson County leaders are coming together to help those impacted. The Red Cross has an emergency shelter set up at Greenwood Middle School for those who need it. The Salvation Army of Johnson County says they will have a mobile kitchen for those who need it also. And as Gina mentioned earlier, I spoke with the Whiteland Fire Chief earlier this morning, who says more community support, support may be on the way this morning. There's going to be church groups and other, you know, different people out there that are going to start, you know, having donation drives. We're going to try and put that information out so everybody can see it. So just pay attention to social media, you know, any press releases that we might do over the next week, and we'll, we'll try and get more information out as we go. And we'll continue to pass that information along as well as soon as we get it. Some good news this morning is you can help right now. Kroger says they're opening up a donation line. So when you go to Kroger and you want to check out, there will be an option for you to donate to those impacted by this tornado. The chief also tells me that FEMA and emergency management services will be in this area later this morning assessing the damage. So hopefully we'll get a better sense of just exactly how many people were impacted, how how much damage this tornado actually caused and Gina I guess the big question is how long this cleanup process will take. It will take some time. Matthew, we will check back in with you at 930. Thank you for that live report from Whiteland and in Sullivan County in southwest Indiana, an EF3 tornado packing winds of up to 155 miles an hour killed three people and injured at least 10 more. Our Rich Nye joined Governor Holcomb yesterday to survey the damage. This impacted area of Sullivan is under curfew from 7 p.m. until 7 a.m. after a devastating tornado ripped through this little town at about 1030 on Friday night. 155 homes were destroyed just in this city, 200 throughout Sullivan County. The tornado warning was issued at 10.08 Friday night, giving residents about 22 minutes to prepare. Uh, what we try to do is to provide information and get warnings out in advance, and then people have an action plan that they know what to do and can take cover. And I guess if there's a silver lining, it's that, uh, you know, despite the tragedy, the terrible tragedy that there wasn't more lives lost or people hurt. Inside this house, Lacey Bogard braced for impact with the granddaughter on her lap and her two sons. I came out on the porch and I said, it's coming. And my son told me, he's like, quit being over dramatic and go back to your room. When the lights went off, I said, it's coming. And I went in, she was on my bed and I just dove on top of her. And then my oldest dove on top of me 
and her and my youngest was in the living room with the trying to get the dog and it was it was over within 30 seconds it was just it was terrifying Lacey and her family are okay they salvaged what they could from what's left of their house they have a place to go Governor Helcom arrived Saturday afternoon to meet survivors like Lacey. The governor surveyed the damage with the Sullivan mayor and thanked the cleanup crews. You see, you know, the, the folks that are here who have come from far and wide to help this city. This was a horrific uh, event, but it brings out the absolute best in people too. Someone in this area obviously collected sports cards. Their collection is now scattered throughout Sullivan. Here's a Charles Barkley. This is not the kind of March Madness we wanted to see. In Sullivan, Rich and I, 13 News. With more than 150 homes destroyed just in the city of Sullivan, families certainly, certainly need help with recovery. The city is offering assistance with food, water, shelter, clothing, even housing vouchers. So they are asking anyone who needs help to call the number you see on your screen, 812-638-2023, and leave a detailed message so someone can call you back. We also have this number on our website. Meanwhile, the mayor is overwhelmed by the support Sullivan is receiving from across the state. So many people want to help, but they just don't know how. And we appreciate everybody's help, but at the same time, we are still in a search and rescue operation, and we want to make sure that we don't necessarily uh, flood the areas, right? Uh, so many people do want to help, but we want to make sure our first responders and our officials get everything taken care of. So kind of, I guess my best advice would be st stand by, and uh, we'll definitely announce our needs uh, over, over the coming days. The Wabash Valley Community Foundation has set up a donation fund. You'll find a link in the story at WTHR.com.